Okay, so you've probably heard News 5 is preparing to mark a major milestone, our 75th anniversary. 75 years ago next month, we went on air as Ohio's very first television station. And for so many years, televisions were made to look like pieces of furniture because they were, in a sense, a really big part of our newsrooms, or our living rooms, rather, and a big part of our lives. We would gather around them with family to see with our own eyes the biggest events of the last 75 years. News 5's John Kosick joins us for a look back at just a few of the moments we've shared together. President Kennedy has been shot in Dallas, Texas. Television is where we turned as a family, as a nation, for four days straight in November of 1963 to mourn the passing of a president. It is an event that would mark the beginning of a decade of great change we would see play out across the country and here at home. News 5 cameras were in Cleveland's Huff neighborhood in July of 1966 as racial tensions led to fires, vandalism, and looting. A year later... Are the people of Cleveland willing to vote for a candidate? Cleveland would elect Carl Stokes as the first black mayor of a major American city. A year after that, his brother Lewis will become Ohio's first black member of Congress and together the brothers Stokes would take action when the Cuyahoga River caught fire for the final time in the summer of 1969. They took their fight to Washington resulting in the passing of the Clean Water Act and the creation of the EPA. The nation's big stories would often play out in our backyard. Such was the case on May 4, 1970 when the shooting and killing of four students at Kent State University by Ohio National Guard troops would not only shock the nation but begin to turn the tide of America sentiments against the war in Vietnam. That's the Berlin Wall. With the advancement of electronic news gathering technology, we would soon travel to wherever the big story was happening to bring it home to you. And you're looking directly into East Berlin, where the Brandenburg Gate Plaza is. From Germany to the tearing down of the Berlin Wall in 1989 that led to the eventual fall of the Soviet Union, to Israel for the trial of retired Seven Hills auto worker John Demyanyuk, accused of being infamous Nazi prison guard Ivan the Terrible. Good evening from Jerusalem. I'm Ted Henry with news of the mounting case against John. There always seemed to be a local angle to the big national stories. Challenger, go with throttle up. As the country as a whole watched in stunned silence in January of 1986, at the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger, it was a loss felt locally, as one of the astronauts on board was one of our own, Ackman's Judith Resnick. It was a tragedy that would play out live in real time on News 5 just before noon on that Tuesday, a small hint of what we would experience 15 years later on a Tuesday morning in September of 2001, the tragic set of events that would become forever synonymous with the date, 9-11. WEWS was in its early years when the nation learned of Sam Shepard, a Bay Village doctor convicted in the July 1954 murder of his wife Marilyn, and more than a decade later acquitted in a retrial. A fictionalized version of the story mimicked the series and later movie The Fugitive. We will be shocked by other crimes that would make national news. The Kirtland Cole killings in 1989, when the bodies of a family of five were found buried in a Lake County barn, murdered at the order of self-proclaimed prophet Jeffrey Lundgren, and two decades later in 2000. 2009 when we learned of the actions of serial killer Anthony Sowell as one by one the bodies of the 11 women he killed were found in his Imperial Avenue home. Cleveland police would face tough scrutiny for their handling of those missing persons cases. Pressure they would also face five years later after being placed in the national spotlight in 2014 with the shooting and killing of 12-year-old Tamir Rice. The death of any child is one that hits communities hard, even harder, when like in the 1989 abduction and murder of Amy Mahalovic, they go unsolved, a pain that weighs heavy on our collective heart. That's why we rallied as a community to join in the search for answers in 2003 when Amanda Berry disappeared on her way home from work and a year later when Gina DeJesus also vanished on her way home from school. News 5 cameras were there each April for the individual rallies in search of information into their disappearances. And we were most definitely there on Seymour Avenue that Monday night in May of 2013 when the girls were not only found alive, but alive together. What was the reaction on the girls' faces? I can't imagine to see the sunlight to be Bro, around people. I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. Something is wrong here. Dead giveaway. That's a clip that would go viral. As with these moments in Cleveland, had they occurred in an age of social media, Mayor Ralph Perk in 1972 cutting a ceremonial metal bar with a blowtorch and accidentally catching his own hair on fire. Speaking of catching, there was former Cavs owner Ted Stepien's softball drop from a top terminal tower in 1980 to a catcher below. Successful on the fourth try, yes, but the first three balls, her own hit a car, one spectator in the shoulder, and another in her wrist, shattering it. The tower also playing a supporting role 
the 1986 Balloon Fest fiasco. That's all the release of a million and a half balloons without thought of the consequences. In a light rain, many of the balloons fell, still inflated, causing accidents on the road, forcing Burke Lakefront Airport to be shut down, along with all kinds of environmental consequences and other issues leading to lawsuits. One of the biggest stories of the last 20 years is one that almost all of you never saw on TV as it was happening. The great blackout of August of 2003, when for one night we were without our electronics, without our TVs, our air conditioners, simply hanging out with and checking in on our neighbors. It, like the great blizzard of 78 and every major snowstorm we've experienced over 75 years, was a reminder of our resilience, yes, but also of our collective strength. Strength that stopped a wrecking ball from leveling Playhouse Square in the 70s. Tell the world, we did it! And strength that broke the coastal poles in convincing the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame board that Cleveland is the heart of rock and roll, and it should be its home. A victory we shared at its opening in 1995, a celebration that followed by only a year the opening of Gateway giving the city now anchors building blocks on either side of downtown to grow on. We've celebrated many other collective achievements that in turn have set us up for more. Through it all, WEWS will be there as we have been there to bring it to and share it with you whenever and wherever history in the making happens. John Kasich, News 5.